Okay, so the last big topic I want to talk about before we get to just energy conservation, um, or the last big talk about work, is the work done by a variable force. Remember we said that the work done by an individual force is F dot D, but that is for a constant force where F is the force that we're talking about and D is the displacement. Okay. So let me just look at that um, on how, what that looks like on a graph of F versus D. Actually, I'm going to have to change my variable D for displacement. So let's just say we've got a box holding a bunny and whoop, whoop. I guess it should be a turkey because it's almost Thanksgiving, sort of. Halloween, no, no, it should be a pumpkin. Oh, it's a pumpkin. I'm pushing a pumpkin. I'm not. I'm being lazy, so I'm not getting just pushing it straight on. I'm pushing it sort of downward um, at a force F, and it goes across the floor or across the table a distance S. So I'm just changing my distance variable here from D to S. We could do that. Not a problem. Shouldn't shouldn't be confusing. The work done by my force is F dot S or F magnitude of force times S, magnitude of displacement, times the cosine of the angle between them, where we take our force vector and we just move it parallel to itself. The force vector is there, so this is my angle theta, and that's the angle between them. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so that is the work done by the force. How do we represent this on a graph? Well, we can represent this on a graph by plotting F cosine theta here versus s and f cosine theta as you know as it moves is going to move right so at some point it's going to move we can call it some small amount of distance ds some later point is going to move more distance we can call that ds1 ds2 more distance ds3 ah and this is why i got rid of my d i should take a take a step back here for a second so D in mathematics, as well as meaning displacement or distance, it often is used in mathematics to mean a small change. D is a small change. It's like delta. Delta is a change. D is a small change. So I'm using D now to mean a small change in S. So let's say I pull it a total distance S, but I break, it up into, I break the path up into pieces. I say, for the first second of time, I pull it a ds1, a small distance. We can call it ds1. And then for the second second, I pull it ds2. For the third second, I pull it ds3. For the fourth second, I pull it ds4. Yeah, I could have just called them s1, s2, s3, and s4. But there's a reason why I'm calling them ds's here. Um, because it's a small change in, in displacement. Okay. So eventually, right, I get it there, where s is equal to the sum of all of my ds's, okay, ds sub i. s is the sum of all my ds's. Um, <clears throat> or we can say, see that s just increases, right? With one second is ds1, two seconds is ds1 plus ds2, three seconds is ds1 plus ds2 plus ds3, etc. So s increases. But as I pull it, I'm pull, pulling with a, or pushing it in this case, I'm pushing with a constant force. So the constant force is f cosine theta. So what would a graph of f cosine theta versus s look like, right? s is increasing, ds1, ds2, ds3, ds4, ds5, etc. Oh, I should have drawn a different color. The graph of f cosine theta versus s looks like that. How is the work represented on this graph? The work is equal to f cosine theta this quantity here, f cosine theta, that quantity on the y-axis, times s, this quantity here on the x-axis. So the work is the, the, the purple vector pointing up times the purple vector pointing, well, not the vector, they're not vectors, they're just, that indicates a quantity. It's f cosine theta times s, it's the area of this rectangle. It's the area of the rectangle beneath the curve. Work is the area. So this is important to be able to understand graphs like we have with velocity, acceleration, and displacement, that work 
is the area under the F versus S curve. Sound a little weird, but I said F. I said F. F cosine theta, but you know it's the compo is the important component of the force. So whatever the component of the force that's moving the object, you would graph the component of the force that's moving the object versus the d distance that it moves in the direction of that component, and the work is just the area under the graph. This is important. This is for a constant force. So I know I have at the top work done by a variable force underlined because that's what we're going to talk about. But first we're talking about work done by a constant force. Now we ask what if the force varies? What if the force gets smaller as I push across the floor? If the force gets smaller as I push across the floor, if the force varies, now work done by a variable force, if the force gets smaller, right, it might do something like that. And if the force gets smaller, how do I calculate the work? The work is no longer F dot D if the force changes. Because which force would I use, right? If the force changes, if we start at a maximum force and we go to a zero force, do I use the maximum? Do I use the zero? Do I use the average? But what it, and it would be the average if it, was this, if it changed linearly like this. But what if, you know, what if it cha didn't change linearly? What if it changed you know, like this, like a, a parabolic curve or something? Uh, then what force would I use? The force here, the force here, right? The force is changing the whole time. But we do know, again, the work is the force, uh, sorry, is the area under the curve. Remember, I have just changed my displacement variable from D to S. So it's the, f it's the area under the important, the, the F cosine theta, the component of force that's moving the object, um, versus displacement curve. This is just displacement. That's the work, it's that area. So if, the, if this was actually, if we knew it changed linearly, then we know it's just the area of this triangle. So the work in this case, let's say that we know that's linear, and we know we start at F, you know, we can say F0, F cosine theta, and then we go to F equals zero, then we know that the work in this case, whoops, I had already written W, work is the area of that triangle. So it's gonna be one half F, cosine theta times s. So that would be the work. But if the force changes with some arbitrariness, right, we want to know what is the work done? Well, the work done is still the area under the curve. Let's say we get to some distance s final. We can stop there. So it's the area under that curve. How do we find the area under that curve? The area under an arbitrary curve is the integral. So this is where you gotta know some integrals. You gotta be able to use some integrals. The work under that curve in general is the integral of f dot ds. It's the integral. You learn in calculus, and I cannot reteach it. I can't teach integrals. It's just that is the, what the work is. The work is the integral of f dot ds, or the integral of f ds times the cosine of the theta angle between them. Let's say that what varies is f and not theta. Okay, careful here. Okay, that's, this, is, this, is the, our, this is the most general definition of work. So remember before, we had a specific definition of work for a special case. For a constant, I left off force, for a constant force. But this is the most general definition. So this holds for a constant force as well, because if it's a constant force, then the integral just goes away. Um, and I can show how that works in a second, but it just goes away and it becomes f dot s. But this is the most general definition. So we really should just be sticking with this definition. This is the definition of work. Integral of f dot ds. So that means it's the integral of f ds cosine theta. Now, how do integrals work? If something is constant, you can take it out of the integral. If it changes, you have to leave it in. This is our integral variable. We're integrating over s from some s initial to some s final. That's what we're integrating over. If f depends on s, it has to stay in the integral. 
If theta depends on s, it has to stay in the integral. So let's look at this example here where I said my force is going to get smaller. But I didn't say my theta changes. So if theta doesn't change, then you can just pull that out. So if, for example, so this is general, but now it's no longer general when I write what I'm going to write next. If, for example, theta is constant, then we can say, oh, cosine theta comes out, and it's just f ds from s0 to s final. And theta is a constant, so we can just evaluate that out, what's out front. But if it's not constant, we have to leave it in the integral. We can take out whatever's constant. Okay. And just to be sure you understand, that was assuming that my f gets smaller in this picture, in this picture, but theta doesn't change. But let's say that if f didn't get smaller, but theta changed, right? Let's say that as I was pushing, my force moved down, 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 then theta would change, in which case I couldn't take it out of the integral, and I would have to figure out how to do this integral. Okay, let's do an example. Before I do an example, let me remind you, for those of you, if those of you who know how to do integrals, comfortable with integrals, can skip this portion. Actually, that makes me think I should do it as a separate video, so you can skip it if you want to skip it. So let's 